Hi guys, I'm Jen Johns. Welcome back to the channel. A little while ago, the mirror cake glaze took the internet by storm, and I showed you a really easy way to do it yourself with the mirror cake tutorial. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. The link is in the description box. Today, I'm going to be bringing you the mirror cake's a sophisticated older sister, the velvet cake. Now I'm not talking red velvet, I'm talking an actual velvet technique that is going to cover the cake to look like it's made out of fabric, so velvet fabric. Let's get started on this tutorial. To make our white chocolate cheesecake mousse, we're going to be using 10 ounces or 300 grams of white baking chocolate. We're going to need 300 grams or 10 ounces of cream cheese. You could use light if you prefer, I'm going to be using the regular. We need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to be using three tablespoons of lemon juice. We need a cup and a half of whipping cream and that's about 400 milliliters. And we're also going to be using an envelope and a half of unflavored gelatin, which is the equivalent of half of an ounce or 10 grams. So the first thing we're going to do is whip our whipping cream up to stiff peaks. Once I've got it whipped, I'm going to put it into the fridge to wait for the recipe portion of when I need it. So what we're going to do after we've got the whipping cream all whipped up, I'm going to have the four tablespoons of water here, use cold water, and I'm going to sprinkle my gelatin on the top of the water, and then just briefly incorporate that, and then we're going to let it bloom. While the gelatin is blooming, I'm going to take my white chocolate, make sure you've got it in a microwavable safe bowl, and I'm going to put it into the microwave for about 45 min seconds at a time. And what I'm going to do is make sure I melt it completely. While the gelatin's blooming and the chocolate is melting, you can take your cream cheese and beat it until it's nice and light and fluffy. Once the chocolate is melted and the cream cheese is light and fluffy, you can add the white chocolate into your cream cheese mixture. And then I'm going to just continue to whip them both together. And what you want to make sure is that you don't have any clumps of cream cheese left. So it might take you a little bit longer to really whip all of that cream cheese into the chocolate. So you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. So I've heated my lemon juice up for about 30 seconds in the microwave and I'm just going to add it to my gelatin mixture there. It's had plenty of time to bloom. So we're just going to stir that in and you want to make sure that it gets completely dissolved until you've got a nice lemon mixture here. And we're just stirring that so there we go. And what I'm going to do now is pour this into my chocolate and cream cheese mixture. And I'm also going to add the vanilla as well. So put that into there and then add in your vanilla and give that another whip. Once we have the ingredients all combined here with our cream cheese mixture, we're going to take the whipping cream that we whipped in the first place and we're going to put it all into the bowl here. Now we're going to gently try to beat it back into here. You want to be, you can fold it in if you choose, but I had success using the mixer. So I'm just going to continue with that. Just keep it on low speed. So the pan I'm going to be using for this cheesecake mousse is this one called Veg. Now I bought it on a pastry chef website. I'll put a link to it in the description box so you can grab it yourself. It's pretty cool and I love how it looks like there's something dropping into the water. So I just wanted you to see what the box looks like. And I'll switch out now here. So here's the actual pan. It's a silicone pan. And when you're putting your mixture inside of, in your, inside of the pan, you want to make sure that you fill in all those ridges. You can use a piping bag, but I found an even better way to do it is just to take your mixture like this and get as much as you can to start off in here. You do want to fill this up all the way. And what I'm going to do is just pat it on the table until you'll start to see little bubbles come up. And then you can start to fill it again. And then you want to fill it all the way to the top. This is an eight inch pan. So if you're going to be using a different shaped pan or a different size pan, because obviously you can use whatever pan you want to, you're going to know that this recipe makes enough for this eight inch pan and you'll get a little bit extra. After I get this all in, I'm going to pop it into the freezer. 
So now that the cake is frozen, you're going to pull it out, just pop it out of the pan, it comes out super easily. And there's a couple different ways where you can put a velvet texture on the cake. I'm going to be using a cocoa butter velvet spray, which is super easy to use. You can also do it with like a cocoa butter airbrush gun, but I didn't have one of those. And I wanted to use something that you would more likely be able to find. I'll put a link in the description box to where I managed to get this from. It comes in tons of different colors. We're going to be using this cool purple. Now here I'm going to go quite lightly on the side where the lines are close together. And then I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the other side. So just give your bottle a shake. And then I'm going to spray it quite heavy on this side and I'll just get started on that. So I've got the cake covered in the wonderful velvet texture spray. You can see that on this side, I did end up going quite a bit heavier than I did on the other side. And what that's doing is the spray is just catching the top of the ridges and it's leaving the other side of the ridges blank. And what it's doing is just giving a little bit more of dimension to the cake. because I really wanted the ridges to pop out because that's the cool part of the pan. Now I use these, this spray, like I was saying, and you can tell by the color of the can and the color on the cake, they don't quite match exactly. Just keep that in mind when you're purchasing your colors. I found that the blue did the same thing. The blue was quite a bit darker than what was on the can, but the red and the yellow did stay true to basically what you saw on the can. So now we're going to work on what we're going to put on the top. So to decorate the top of the cake, I rated my sprinkles and candy cupboard. And what I'm going to go with is a blue and a light pink combination on top. It looks really good against the dark purple, but of course you could use any color scheme that you want to. So I've just got different shapes, different sizes here of um, the little sprinkles and dragées um, and little sixlets. We're also going to use a like one or two of these colored lollipops. If you can't find the lollipops, you can just use gumballs. That works the same. And then here I have my mini donut pan. And what I'm going to do is this is going to be the feature in the circle part of the cake. So I'm just taking some white chocolate and I'm just filling that up. Now I've got some already done here and I've got them set. So I'm just going to pop it out and then there we go. And then in the center of that is where you would put your gumball or the lollipop. And we're going to put that on the cake next. So I've put my little mini chocolate donut here in the center. If you're looking for something to fit in this hole, it's about two inches across. So that's why this little mini donut pan worked absolutely perfect for me. Now I cut off the end of the lollipop and I'm just going to stick that into the cake here. Press that down in there. Just want to get it in there nice and solid. And then I'm going to take the different shaped dragées and the other sprinkles and just kind of sporadically place them in the cake here. Again, using my pink and blue theme. I've got some little ones and some larger ones here. I'm going to put some white on as well and I'll finish off the top here and I'll be back to show you the finished product. So there you go, everybody. I finished off the top of the cake with the little sixlets and the other dragées, and I've got it completed here for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the velvet technique. Now, if it's something that you really liked, let me know. If it's something that you didn't like, let me know as well. Now, if you've got another cake technique that you want me to explore on how to make it a simple tutorial for you, make sure you let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys all again next time.